Right, I have Ken Hayworth here. Um, Ken is going to, is a popular neuroscientist in the whole brain emulation arena, and he's going to be speaking at GF 2045 on the 15th and 16th of June uh, 2013. This is going to be held in New York at the Lincoln Center. Um, and I thought I might ask Ken, what 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 is what are you going to be speaking about? What's your topic, and and um, why did you choose to speak about this particular topic? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I was um, uh, I was very glad to be invited uh, as a speaker of, uh, uh, at that conference. Um, it is a uh, 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 the the conference is about a very uh, radical idea of um, of uh, really eventually getting human beings to uh, uh, to migrate out of their body. And into a robot bodies, uh, and it and the uh, the idea is to have this happen in uh, in multiple phases, and they've got experts uh, from uh, uh, from telerobotics, which is the first way of uh, of doing this, which uh, um, uh, to create telerobotic avatars of people, uh, so that and then this is very concrete. The idea is to is to just have a a robot that is um, uh, being uh, uh, controlled remotely uh, by a human being uh, and also having very good sensory feedback so that essentially you feel like you're where the robot is. Uh, telerobots have been around for a long time. This is uh, asking for a level of telerobotic uh, virtual presence that is, uh, or telepresence that is uh, unheard of. Uh, I think that's very exciting. Uh, the reason why they asked me to talk at the conference, though, is because uh, uh, I'm working on the beginning steps of something that would, in the long term, uh, uh, realize full transition to, um, uh, to a robot body. So I'm working on, uh, on ideas that we eventually lead to mind uploading. Uh, so the, the idea of mind uploading is that you take a, a, a particular human's brain, uh, preserve that particular human's brain in a way that makes it uh, available for high resolution scanning, uh, possibly by electron microscopy, and so that that scanning can look at every single synapse and every single neuron and every neuronal connection in the brain, uh, map those out, and then put them into a computer simulation uh, that can then act just like that original human brain, bringing back that original person. And then that, uh, that computer simulation is hooked up to a, uh, a robotic body, and essentially the, 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 the person has transferred their mind uh, into, uh, into, a, into a robot. And so this, this, this is a, uh, a technique right out of science fiction. Uh, the idea that it could be achieved within this century is, uh, is, is very provocative. Uh, maybe it won't be, maybe it will be. It is unquestionably a difficult, difficult, difficult thing to do. Uh, if we wanted to uh, estimate the costs right now, if we even had the technology to do it, based upon projecting current technologies, we would get into the hundreds of billions of dollars. This is something that is an incredibly, incredibly difficult task. Um, and what I'm going to be talking about at the, at the conference is basically uh, the research that I'm doing right now on very small scales, on a fly brain, on pieces of mouse brain, uh, the technologies that we have today for mapping neural circuitry at this level that would eventually be needed to bring, uh, to, to, to map an entire human brain at the level that could uh, uh, read off all of the individuality, all the memories, everything in a, in a person to allow this mind uploading. And so what I do on a day-to-day on -day basis is I, uh, I take uh, small pieces of brain tissue that have been preserved uh, using chemical fixation and have been uh, embedded in plastic. Uh, these are 
put into a, uh, a, scan, a special scanning electron microscope that is also equipped with a focused ion beam. And the, um, uh, the, piece, of, uh, the piece of brain tissue uh, is, is put under the electron beam. Its top surface is scanned and imaged in the electron beam. And then the focused ion beam is uh, brought in and removes a few nanometers, small as two nanometers, off the top surface of this, uh, of this block of plastic brain tissue. And then the electron beam images that newly revealed surface. And this uh, process of, of ablating a very thin layer with the focused ion beam and then imaging with the electron beam is repeated tens of thousands of times uh, in, our, in our laboratory to map out the, um, uh, the volume of this piece of brain tissue so that you can see every, uh, every synapse, every synaptic vesicle, uh, every, every small neuronal process, everything that, uh, that constitutes, this is better resolution than 10 by 10 by 10 nanometers. That's, that's the type of resolution that we're talking about. And we do this routinely now for these small pieces of, uh, of brain tissue, for things on the order of 100 by 100 by 100 microns, much less than a cubic millimeter. We're talking about much less than a cubic millimeter. But we do it routinely today at this level. And we have the software tools needed to trace out all of this circuitry uh, and, and understand all of the connectivity within this block of brain tissue. And so what I'll be talking about is not only that technology, but the, uh, but the, uh, the scaling up of that technology. Uh, what I've been working on um, uh, most recently is the ability to take a larger block of, of brain tissue that's preserved in this way and slicing it up into uh, about 20 micron thick chunks so that these chunks can go to different machines uh, that are all imaging in parallel. What that means is that you could uh, eventually get as large a volume imaged as you want as long as you have enough machines, as long as you have enough of these focused ion beam scanning electron microscopes, you could map out a whole cubic millimeter. You could map out a whole uh, mouse brain. You could even map out a whole human brain if you had millions of these machines running in parallel. So I'm going to be talking about that technology. I'm going to be talking about uh, the, the pathway to actually getting to those millions of machines. Um, and, and I'm also going to be talking about uh, the, what we can do today in terms of uh, preserving a brain uh, to, um, uh, to be made available for these technologies. And so the, the, um, the best thing, that, that the, the best that we can do today uh, in terms of preparing a organism for undergoing this type of imaging at this scale is uh, we can do a whole mouse brain. We can do a whole mouse brain uh, uh, that is preserved and stained and properly set up so that you can uh, essentially, you do, we don't have enough machines to actually image all of this, but we can, um, uh, we can look at this whole mouse brain and say, ah, if we had enough machines, we would be able to map out its whole circuitry. This is stuff that has just barely been done uh, 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 this year, uh, this type of uh, preservation of a brain. And uh, uh, I, I, outside of my day job as a, as a scientist, I've set up a, uh, an organization called the Brain Preservation Foundation that is, uh, uh, is asking the question, this stuff that we do in a laboratory, that preserves brains in a way that could eventually be uh, uh, be mind uploaded, be uh, be scanned and at the at the uh, at the nanometer level, and then all the neural circuitry uh, mapped out for for eventual mind uploading. Is that something that we can actually get to work on an entire human brain? Because if we could get that to work on an entire human brain, then that means that everybody today 
could undergo the first part of this mind uploading procedure. It may take a hundred years, it may take a 200 years to get to the second step of this mind uploading procedure, which is the scanning of the brain and, the, uh, and bringing somebody back as a simulation. But the first step of actually preserving somebody's brain could actually be done within the next few years if we devote the resources to develop the technology to, um, uh, uh, to apply the techniques that already work on uh, the scale of a mouse brain to a human brain. And so I'll be talking a little bit about, uh, about that research, about the very new research that, uh, that, that uh, people have done for, um, uh, as part of a, a brain preservation prize that we've, uh, my organization has offered uh, the, uh, on the mouse brain. Uh, this is uh, um, uh, work that has been um, uh, uh, trying to be done to, to demonstrate that a whole mouse can be preserved at this level. So I'll be talking about some of the results of that. And I will be talking about how we can uh, actually scale what it will take to scale that up to, uh, to get this to work at the human level and hopefully uh, what it will take to get this once demonstrated into hospitals so that people can, uh, uh, so that people that are faced with uh, terminal illnesses uh, and, severe, uh, and severe aging and, and dementia and other things can, uh, can take advantage of the idea of of uh, preserving their brain in the hopes of coming back uh, one day as an uploaded um, uh, individual. Uh, so that's that's what I'll be talking at uh, the conference. Awesome. Well, um, definitely uh, looking forward to seeing that. Uh, now, there are some other speakers who seem to be up your alley in terms of neuroscience, like uh, Ed Boyden, Theodore Berger, Randall Kuhne, and um, maybe even George Church. Um, and then there's some computational, like uh, the AI guys, like Marvin Minsky and whatnot. Is there any, is there any uh, particular? <laughs> is there any particular? Uh... <laughs> yeah, Marvin Minsky is, uh, is, is the AI, one of the AI pioneers. Yes, I know. yes, yes. yes he's... I just like lightly <laughs> pass him off. Yeah, and then there's yeah a few, yeah, a few like others like yeah, Kurzweil and Minsky and whatnot. Yeah. Um, oh, it's just. Uh, going to ask you, which which talks are you looking forward to? Um, yeah, which what, what excites you about some of the other talks? Here? Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to to all of them. Uh, obviously, I um, uh, I've uh, I've definitely talked to Ed Boyden and Ted Berger and um, uh, seen their research. It'd be great to see what they're up to their their latest uh, their latest work. Um, uh, Ed Boyden's work in optogenetics is just a uh, uh, it it just opens up something that I think people wouldn't even have suspected uh, a few years ago that would be impossible. The idea of, of of targeting a subset of neurons in a mouse brain and turning them on or off at will uh, is just such a powerful technique for neuroscience research. Um, it's, it's really going to be exciting to hear, to hear him talk. Um, I, I, I think in general, uh, one of the things that I'm very interested in in, in, the, in the conference in, in, as a whole uh, is just, uh, there's just a lot of debate. You know, uh, this is definitely, I, I, they call it a congress and not even a conference. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think, I, I, what I would hope is that, um, uh, so the, so the, uh, the person that's organizing this, uh, Dmitry Itzkov, uh, he has a, a very grand, bold uh, vision for, for the future. Uh, it may be too grand and too bold for some people. Uh, I may be one of them. Uh, but uh, the, the timeline is very aggressive. Mm -hmm. But him getting a bunch of people together that know what they're, um, uh, know the, the research today, know the, uh, know the techniques, and, and really getting them to argue about what is possible and what is not possible and whether this makes sense and what research, uh, you know, what, what research should be prioritized. I think that's a great idea uh, because um, uh, a, a lot of this, uh, of this grand vision on the surface of it looks 
um, uh, uh, looks very implausible on those timescales, but you really need to talk to the people that are in the fields that are are living day in and day out doing the research to see what's possible. And I'm, I'm very happy to see um, uh, uh, people talk about that and the, the, looking forward to the debates. Excellent. Yep, looking forward to it as well. So, um, yeah, so 15th and 16th of June 2013, if you're um, anywhere nearby or you can uh, get there, I definitely recommend it. Um, it seems like the it's it, it the the conscience theme is very important. Um, you know, we're talking about things that will uh, I believe will um, these technologies will make a big difference in in the world of the future. So thanks very much, Ken, uh, for our interviews today. And um, yeah, I'll, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing you again, perhaps next time in 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 real life. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Uh, I'll try to make it down to Australia. Yeah, yeah, and you're always welcome. There's conferences down here. You're always welcome to come and talk out. Too. Great. Thank, thank you so much.